Hello and welcome to the Regen Racing Podcast, episode 6. I'm Dino. And I'm Nath. Welcome again, Nath. I'm glad to have you back. Oh, it's, it's always always a pleasure, Dean. I uh, I listened to our first episode again last week, and um, it sounds really scripted. I mean, it, it's kind of a hard listen compared to what we have <laughs> now, so I'm happy with... Um, I'm really happy with uh, what we've been doing recently with the podcast, so hopefully the listeners agree. Oh, it's good to uh, good to hear you think we're making progress. Yeah, a couple of couple of things before we get started. Um, Mitch Evans liked our competition on Instagram, which I thought was amazing. So, oh, yeah. awesome, um, Mitch, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, we've said his name so many times that surely uh, he must be must must get through to him. Hopefully. It must have gotten through to him surely by now, but you never know. Maybe there's some people out there that haven't told him about the about the pod. Um, also, there was there was a lady named Kay. I was sitting next to her on the plane, and um, we started talking as you do. Just you know, what do you do? You know, where are you from? Um, and we started talking about podcasts, and that I did a podcast, and she goes, "Oh, do you listen to any?" So we uh, compared and. And um, yeah, she had uh, Disgraceland as her recommendation. So I really enjoy it. So that's my media of the week. What's it? What's it about? So Disgraceland is um, is kind of the the truth or different stories about artists, like music artists, and the the side of them you don't hear about very often, or just yeah, stories from from their past or different things like that so yeah really cool really cool cool i'll have to have a listen yeah for sure um my media for the week i don't really have anything to be honest um i i haven't been listening to anything new this week just the usual um usual podcasts and and music just catching up on a lot of things really no water deep mountain high i i have not listened to the the latest episode i've um Got it sitting there waiting, waiting for a nice long drive. Oh, you're missing out. Yeah, you're missing yeah. out. It is it is very cool. Very, very cool. So big big episode this week, but before we get into it, um you got an update on our competition, Dean. Yeah, so we haven't had many entries uh in the competition so far. We're giving away a keep cup. We've had two entries. Uh you can find further details on our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and they're linked in the show notes. So we're looking for different ideas or segments for the show, whatever they may be. So take a look at the competition. And um, a couple of awesome podcasts have retweeted us, uh, Pod Bros and Super License F1, and also Formula One reviews on YouTube. So thank you so much for getting the word out there. But yeah, we do need more entries and uh, for you to help us out. So how do you enter, Dean? On Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, you just have to like the post or follow uh, and also retweet or share it and give us a bit of bit of info or um, a segment idea for our show and that's it so so you can just send us send us a message through any of those services and we will add you to a draw excellent now moving right along to news big week on news this week well of course it's uh formula e's last last season four weekend so Mm. That is that is the elephant in the room, as it were. But we've got some some other interesting stuff for you as well. Yeah, so Goodwood Festival of Speed is happening at the moment. Um, so it's always cool to see some some classic racing as well as some um future stuff coming out. One of the really cool things we've seen through there is uh, Robo Race, um, fully robotic car, and they've also um got some real cool three hundred sixty degree videos that they've um they've posted up so well worth having a look there very cool stuff yeah fully autonomous which is incredible (laughs) it's you know that's you know to have it speeding around the track um yeah we'll put it in the show notes a uh it's full full run 360 degree video so it's interesting to see how it goes yeah um also some some sustainability news coming out of formula e so formula e has become the first category in motorsport to earn ISO 20121 certification, which is the highest award in sustainable events. Congratulations. Yeah. It's hard to get this. Like, there's there's not too many things. Uh, it says here that Roland Garros, 
which is the French Open, uh, the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, and the UEFA Champions League. So there's not too many, and it, it came just days before the New York e So I think there was quite a few different things going on, like DHL, who do the um, logistics. Yeah. They were giving free rides to people around New York City to the race, and so it's really cool. cool. It's really cool to see. Yeah. And also the obligatory news from the um, EPCS, the Electric Production Car Series. Um, some more some more information that they've teased out there. Yeah. Reported by uh, eRacing365, the Electric GT uh, has issued a five-year roadmap for its EPCS, and it is planning to add more manufacturers, which is only good news. I, uh, I want to see Ford in there. Want to see a Ford Mondeo or, a, you know, something yeah. like that competing as well as the Tesla or, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see, you know, 2021 is, uh, when they anticipate that the EPCS will become an open platform series. So what's what I, um, the one piece of news I picked up from this, which is really interesting is, um, manufacturers will need to have a minimum production of 500 units to enter. So hopefully we're going to see um, you know a lot of the the mainstream manufacturers enter as well. But you know five hundred it's not a lot, so we might see a few little boutique packages in there as well. Also, Senya China is on the calendar for season five of Formula E, which unfortunately we missed last episode. And um, we hope that you know Uruguay can make an appearance. I had a had another look at the calendar, and it was Punta del Este was not on there, which is my favourite race of the year. So. I was I was gutted to see that, so hopefully it makes it back on. Oh, hmm. So how many how many spots are left open on the calendar? One. Well, fingers crossed for uh, Punta del Este. Then it'll be it'll be sad not to see that. It's been quite a regular feature of the last few seasons of Formula E. So a lot of good good races and good history there. Yeah, and it's it's just a I mean it's a picturesque kind of event. It's right on the beach. It's you know, it's a, a very technical track, which maybe that's why it's not been added. You know, these, these new cars coming through, maybe they just won't handle it very well. Maybe. Wait and see. But, you know, Sanya China, looking forward to that new location, um, which is going to come with its own challenge. So we uh, can't wait to, to see that and see how that turns out. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. All right. So, Sylvain Filippi has been promoted to Managing Director of DS Virgin Racing. And um, we saw the um, departure of Team Principal Alex Tai. So this this fella has, has taken over. And there's a couple of quotes from him. I'm very grateful for this opportunity and thank the team's board and shareholders for their support and trust in me. And I think it's part of the uh, Chinese renewable and smart energy giant Envision Energy, which became the majority shareholder in the team earlier this year that might have had a had something to do with the change so it's interesting also that virgin racing's technical partnership with ds performance will cease following the season finale at new york virgin is expected to sign a deal with audi which i can't wait for what do you reckon about that one nath oh really excited to see this we've we've seen audi's performing so well in the last half of this um season four um so yeah, it would be it would be great to see Virgins racing on the on the Audi powertrain. Yeah, so DS has gone to to Cheetah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting for the manufacturers to see who they end up with and what powertrains they've got. You know, for season five. Yeah. So moving along to the final races of season four. So we've got some statistics for you: the New York City E Prefect file, as it were, the track length. 2.373 kilometers or 1.475 miles, 45 laps on the Saturday and 43 on Sunday, 14 corners, 9 to the right, 5 to the left, and the previous winners, Sam Bird has won twice. So what happened in Super Bowl for race one, Nath? Just before we get to that, Dean, um, why do you have any insight why the difference in laps between um, Saturday and Sunday? I've got no idea, unfortunately. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe something with the scheduling, but no, Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe some listeners out there could probably enlighten us. I'm sure they probably can. I think the only reason I could could see is you know two or yeah two laps shorter on Sunday. Maybe they're just 
anticipating you know allowing people to go a little bit harder um, a little shorter race yeah it could be for the final race yeah but coming back to the come back to the race one super pole so um qualifying first uh was sam Buemi, followed by mitch evans in second our man um nico prost in third yeah uh, Jerome D'Ambrosio from Dragon Racing in fourth, and Daniel Apt in the Audi qualifying fifth in Super Bowl. Brilliant. So the race one review, we had our man Evans qualifying in second, and he doesn't get off the line. Oh, it was it was absolutely crushing. Oh, it was so disappointing. The the race was a perfect time for us in New Zealand. It was seven thirty in the morning, and then seven on the on the Monday, so it was Sunday, Monday, it was perfect, I got up, I got up early to see Evans on the front row, and then he slows, almost collects D'Ambrosio, and and I was gutted, so the team said it could be a drive shaft failure, so it's, yeah, just disappointing, mm. it was really exciting though. Did Evans get back into the race later on? No, it was, it was hard from there, yeah, no, so that was mm. him, him gone, mm. but it was mm. exciting race one, obviously the fight between John eric Verne and Sam Bird was was well underway, where Jeff came from 20th, so the back of the grid, to 5th. What a race. What a race from Jeff. What a race. Race of the season for him, almost. Like, that's a... Going 15 places throughout throughout the race, that is spectacular driving. He was, he was taking chunks out of everyone. It was chunks of time out of everyone. It was just incredible. Also, Alex Lynn had an unfortunate crash that allowed Bird to conveniently bunch up and and keep the title alive. Which, yeah, yeah, it looked nasty, and I'm 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 sure I'm sure DS Virgin don't you know don't want things like that to happen. But yeah, it was it was convenient for Bird to try and get back into the race, which he almost managed, but not quite, not quite, not quite. Um, it was interesting listening to the post race interview with Bird afterwards. Um, he hinted that. They just didn't have the efficiency on this race, um, seeing as it was a bit longer. Um, they just you know, couldn't couldn't make the car compete on the longer race. So you'll be interested to see what they do in in next season. Yeah, be interesting to see what they can do with Audi. Um, they did look a bit, I don't know, a bit hampered, a bit bogged down. Um, Sam Burr just didn't have the didn't have the passing ability like we've seen so often mm. it was it was yeah difficult for him and he looked really down it was yeah he i think he knew that he wasn't going to be able to fight yeah yeah it must be hard when you're when you know you have to have to take it easy just to to get to the finish line um and you can't be as feisty as you'd like to be the whole way through yeah the efficiency just wasn't there for him so that's unfortunate mm. but um did did you see the the battle for <laughs> The battle for first and second with Apt and Degrassi. Did you see the move Degrassi pulled? I didn't know. I actually missed that. Oh, I, it, it wasn't great, actually. He kind of cut across him. Yeah. Prob- and, and you could see that Apt was mm. furious. So I'm sure they had a few words before race two. Yeah. Any penalties awarded for that? Uh, no. No. No, no penalties. But it was... Yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't an incident. Um, it just like mm. they didn't touch or collide or anything. It was just a a bit of a un well unsportsmanlike racing potentially. But yeah, I'm not sure. But uh, mm. Mm. I've been watching so much football. I'm used to people you know getting close and getting awarded penalties for it. So forgive me on that one. <laughs> oh, well, there's plenty of penalties in the next race. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So finishing off that race. Um, Degrassi pulled out the win, followed by Apton second and Buemi finishing in third. It was good to see Buemi on the podium. Hmm. I don't. I don't think he had a podium since. Well, would have been one of the first races of the season. <laughs> I think uh, Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. So, did just a just a side note here. So, with Jev finishing so high up, did he seal the championship in that first race? He did. So he sealed the championship, and okay. um, there was there was an emotional moment at the end. Um, his his friend Jules Bianchi, who died at Suzuka in a Formula One race a couple of years back, Jev decided to dedicate his championship to, which yeah, that's cool. That's really nice. 
So who was your driver of um, the day for race one, Dean? I really enjoyed Tom Dillman, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Um, qualifying ninth, finishing fourth. You know, he's just in for Eduardo Mortara, just casually coming in for a race and finishing fourth. Um, yeah, I- I- incredible. Moving through the field. Um, not much time in the car this year, so amazing. And yeah, it puts him in the frame for a seat next year for sure, I would have thought. How about yourself? Um, I, look, I honestly didn't watch enough of the race to actually be able to put a name down to that team. No problem. Alrighty, race number two. Race two. Um, Super Pole. Um, Sebastian Buemi coming out top of the Super Pole, um, followed by the two Chichita cars of Andre Lotterer and Jules Verne, and then the two Audis, um, Daniel Apt and Lucas Degrassi. Yeah, this was incredible. This, I mean, what a race. <laughs> if you haven't watched it... <laughs> Turn off this podcast now, go and watch it, and then come back, because <laughs> it was amazing. It was it was definitely the finale that we all all deserved, yeah. and um, it was it was such a show. It was really cool. So, both the Tachita cars look like they jumped the start, but Lotterer is the main offender and gets a penalty. It was interesting. Vern kind of looked like he did. I mean, his reaction time must have been pretty decent. Uh, the commentator said that there was an incident in Formula One with Valtteri Bottas that he went in what would only be described as impossible for a human reaction time. So, I mean, Vern might have done the same thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so very lucky. <laughs> very lucky. Yeah. Yep. So Jeff gets past Buemi at the start, um, and he didn't get uh, end up getting a penalty. So it must have been close, Nate. It must have been close. Um, and then quite a bit of action further down into the race. Yeah, Luca Filippi. I like Filippi. I'm, I'm, I'm gutted. He, he just hasn't had a great season. I really like him, though. Um, he goes to pass Felix da Costa and then hits into the back of Felix da Costa and then tags old D'Ambrosio, who was basically an innocent bystander. So, um, And I think the other dragon retired, so... Both the dragons are out, and both the Venturis are out as well. So they were having technical problems. So yeah, Susie Wolf probably won't be too happy with them, but I'm sure they can build on it. And Jev was sporting throughout the whole race, even though he had the had the season tied up. He was um he was still had his elbows out and was was driving pretty hard. He wanted the win. He was you know Jev is just a masterful defender, and he, I mean he was looking at his mirrors. Yeah. Where's Degrassi? Every single straight is he coming out? You know, is he trying to put the late move on me? Um, yeah, he was just defending for his life. But if you if you want to watch some defending, have a look at the onboards from yeah, Jeff. Have a look at the onboards from Jeff. Yeah. So Jeff ended up taking the win again, followed by uh, the two Audi cars of Lucas Degrassi and Daniel Apt finishing second and third. That's it. Yep. So that was the final race, and uh, I have Daniel Apt for my driver of the day for race two. Buemi passed him late in the race, um, but he had to get had to get back past him to win the Constructors title. So Audi needed that to win the Constructors title, and he did it. He had what he needed, and he got there. Yeah. He made it work. So Daniel Apt, and it's been an awesome season as well. And you actually predicted that, didn't you? That you haven't seen the last of Daniel Apt? Yeah, yeah, it's um like so great to see um see the Audis finishing second and third, and Daniel Apt, you know, driving pretty consistently throughout the whole weekend, coming away um on the podium on both days. So, um, yeah, yeah, they've been brilliant. I'm sure we'll see a lot more great racing from him next season. Yeah, we absolutely will. So our predictions, I will cut in what we thought from episode four poll. I'm going to give it to Evans. I think Mitch Evans will hook it up again, and I think at least one of the two mm. races on pole. I'm going to go for an absolute domination by Sam Bird. He's going to have the weekend of his life, and he's going to totally dominate like he did last year in New York. I do think, though, Tachita will hold off Audi Sport just for the Constructors title. Ooh. So that's, mm. that's, mm. that's what I'm going with. So I'd like to I'd like to think I'm right, but... <laughs> Because I think Tachita really, really deserve the Constructors title. They've been pretty consistent mm-hmm. all year, and especially Jeff. What about your thoughts? I likewise 
think Sam Bird's going to uh, going to win it. Um, you know, at least be right up there across the two races. I think we might see see some action from Daniel Apt in um, in pole position. I'll call it now. Um, after after the last race, I think he's going to come out with a lot of fire as well. So um, he's a quick driver, and I don't think we've seen the last of him this season. So I have been very wrong. I thought Bird was going to be able to get there, and I thought Tachita would hold them off. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it. At the end of the day, it ended up being very tight. Um, Audi came away with the with the constructors or the team standings um, just two points ahead of Tachita. That's, yeah, that's right. But Bird got third yeah. in the championship. So Degrassi, because of those performances, jumped him in the standings. Yeah, finishing, um, you know, jo- John Eric Verne, uh, of course, finishing 198 points in the lead. Um, on the drivers, Lux Degrassi 144 points, and Sam Bird 143. Only picking up one point in in the final race, so so close there at the end. So let's have a run through the team standings, Nath. What have you What have you got there? Yeah, so so we touched on it just briefly, but team standings: Audi Sport, um, App Schaeffler finishing in 264 points in um, in the number one spot, followed by Tachita on 262. DS Virgin well down um, in third spot. Um, Mahindra, Renault E Dams finishing fifth, and Panasonic Jaguar in sixth. Um, coming in at seventh was Venturi, uh, Neo, Dragon, and then um, Andretti finishing off in tenth, rounding out the team standings. And the driver standings? So um, as we as we talked about, John Eric Verne, Lucas Degrassi, and Sam Bird in the top three. Followed by Boemi in fourth, Daniel Apton fifth, Felix Rosenquist in sixth, Mitch Evans finishing out the year in seventh, Andre Lotter in eighth, Nelson Piquet Jr. in ninth, and Oliver Turvey in tenth. Also, Oliver Turvey broke his, one of his fingers. Uh, he had a crash in Q, uh, Q3, Q I think. Um, so he wasn't going to be racing. Or it might have been one of the practice sessions, but yeah, so uh, they had their reserve driver in. It's been a been a tough year for Neo, so hopefully Oliver's all right and quick recovery and back to racing as soon as possible. Yeah, that that's it for season four. That is, I can't believe it. It's gone too fast. It has. It's it's gone very fast, but only a few months now till we start up season five again of Formula E. Yeah, I think it's December that we get going again in Riyadh, so a new new city. A new race, some new drivers, mm. and we'll definitely definitely bring you all the news for driver changes and all the relevant bits that we find over the break. Uh, we may not be doing as frequent episodes, but we'll continue to cover the news and, um, yeah, look into stuff from other series while Formula E is on break. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us this far. Um, don't forget we've got our competition running, and when are we going to be drawing that, Dean? So it's going to be either the seventh or eighth of August. So, couple of couple of shows time. Excellent. So before then, um, hit us up um, on email at hello at regionracingpodcast dot com. Also on our website regionracingpodcast dot com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So um, anywhere you can think of, we're probably there. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, and be sure to subscribe and keep up to date. And we have just got on Spotify as of today. Oh, yes. Yep. So that was, yeah, that was uh, through Pinecast, who's our host. They have all their shows on Spotify now. So if that's that's what you use, go and check us out. Wonderful. All right, Nath, that's it for season four. Thanks for having me, Dean. Cheers. Have a good one, everyone. out. <laughs>